the vision and when we're talking about to re-establish something that means that there once was something there once was but now it needs to be re-established reinforced again amen so we're talking about re-establishing the vision we're talking about the vision of god so let's go to our first scripture reading which would be in Proverbs 29 and 18. And I know that you all know this in your spirit. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Meaning that they aspire. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Amen. I'm going to open up with prayer. Father, we thank you for your word on today. We thank you for life-changing word, Lord God, that will reestablish, oh God, the vision that we once had and was lost, Lord God. We thank you for being our Lord and our Savior. We thank you for being who you are. And Father, we pray that everyone that hear this word on today, Father, that they will recognize, oh Father, that they need the vision from you and not their own vision, but what you have established with them. So we give you all honor and praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Reestablish the vision amen we're talking about the vision of god so when you can't see what god is doing think on this here you will find yourself stumbling all over yourself am i right you'll find yourself uh, falling all over and stumbling over other people you're all over the place right but every which way but god's way so that so just like a physically blind person you know when i think about uh, stumbling uh, into someone that has not adapted yet to their environment. And so often we have not adapted to the environment of the kingdom. Therefore, we have not sought the Lord. We have not went before him. We, we're not seeking and searching for him or the vision that he has for us or receive the vision that he has for us because we're so busy doing other things. We're so busy captivated about other people's vision and not the vision that he has for us. So we're going to clarify that on this day. Amen. So that you will understand when it comes to the vision of God and know when it's your vision and when it's not your vision or if it's someone else's or if it's the vision that God has given unto you. Amen. I tell you that God will reveal to you if you just go before him and we want to see through the eyes of God. What he reveals, oh my God, the power of God moves upon us through the working of the Holy Spirit. It illuminates the vision that God has for us. As I said, we have to know the vision that God has given and not what we see others uh, doing and, and, and not try to take upon someone else's vision. And that's one of the issues of why the vision has not come to pass because we're not establishing the vision that God has given unto us as an individual. Amen. But we're going to clarify that in this uh, segment of our uh, message on today. So let's say, how many know the vision of your church? How many of you all know the vision of your organization that you work for? I tell you, my church has a vision and it's right at the front entrance of the house of prayer. We know that vision is a revelation given by God. How will you globally influence? And that, that's a question I have for you, the believer. How will you globally influence the transformation of others by the word of God? Ah, okay, that's something to think about. Because when we say that we're in the Word of God, we're studying the Word of God, what are we doing with the Word of God other than studying the Word and holding it for ourselves? Are we releasing that Word into those around us? Are we speaking forth the Word of God into our co-workers, into our spouses? Are we releasing the Word that God has given unto us as we meditate on His Word since we're doing all this studying, right? Are we releasing that word into others that God will have us to release it to? How will you globally, okay, now I'm talking globally. How will you globally influence 
others by the word of God. Amen. Okay, so I'm talking beyond the building. Uh, we've been in a uh, pandemic for a year and a half or so, and, and many of us have been outside of the building, and we have learned that the word of God, our, our pulpit, is, is beyond the building, that it, it takes place out in our community. It takes place out uh, in our homes. It takes place out uh, wherever we are. That's where the word of God goes forth. Amen. That's where we go and we minister the word of God. So how will you influence the transformation of others? Remember, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the unadulterated word of God being spoken into the lives of others that they may understand and receive the uh, salvation. They will uh, rededicate their life, receive healing, because that's what the word does. Amen. We don't just study the word and just the harbor for ourselves, right? So what we know about vision at this point is that vision is a revelation that's given by God. We're talking about the vision uh, uh, and to those that uh, to the believer. So how will you? make a difference in your community how will you make a difference in your home how will you make a difference in in, in on your job in your in, you know doing those things that god is calling you to do by the vision that he has given unto you so when i think about um vision uh, I, I think about when i was in the military i'm a retired um one officer um army officer and i tell you that the, you know whenever we would get a new general would we'll take uh, his or her position, he will or she will post their vision to the organization, and we will take that vision, employees, the soldiers, and we will put that vision right in our work area. Why do we do that? We want to keep it in front of us that we will know it. How do you carry out a vision that you don't know for or support the vision? We're going to talk about sub vision, right? Sub vision and what what all that means. So. Uh, Deuteronomy 8 and 11. Yes, Deuteronomy 8 and 11. It says that be careful that you do not forget the Lord, forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, right? It says that his laws and his decrees that I'm giving you this day. Say, don't forget it. And that's what happens when it comes to the vision. You keep the vision in front of you. If you got to write it down, you got to uh, use sticky notes and, and put it on your mirror, put it by your bedstand, we, like we do in the military. We put that vision right in our cubicle, our work area, up in our office, that we won't forget it. And that's where Deuteronomy 8 and 11, it reminds me that um, the laws of the, the Lord it is for us to not forget. It, 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 it establishes us. It establishes the word of God in and through us. So let me say this about vision uh, for the house of God. Uh, that it comes from God. When you're talking about vision for the house of, in the house of God, it comes from God uh, to the leader or to the senior pastor, not a member or a leader in the church or organization, but to the leader. That would be out of order, right? The vision for the house of God doesn't go to the uh, pastor. It would be out of order. Amen. We're not talking about the subvision, which we are going to talk about, not unto man. It is done unto the Lord. And that's why it's so often when people get upset and um, something's not going their way in the, in the house of God, that they will, they want to leave. They no longer want to support uh, the vision anymore. It's because they're doing it unto man, not unto the Lord. So all that we do concerning the vision of God and when we help uh, uh, being a support in, in, in organization, our business, in, in the church as well, um, we do it unto the Lord and not unto man. That way, we will always be focused in on what is uh, important and what's the priority when we talk about the word of God and what's the priority, which is God, right? So now there are subdivisions that I mentioned. So let's, let's talk about these subdivisions. It means to get up under. A sub, sub, sub vision means to get up under the vision, to carry out, to support the vision. So subdivisions um, or subvisions, they come from uh, submarines, um, a, a sub, the, a sub comes from submarine and, and, and which is a to submerge. It, it's, it's that um, that prefix there. And the Greek word for uh, the Greek word hupotasso means to arrange, 
to uh, order of under. All this we're talking about of uh, subvisions. Uh, hoopo means to under, to get under. Uh, tasso means to arrange under God's arrangement, such as a submarine. If you uh, understand and you get that vision um, that I'm speaking of, uh, like a submarine, it gets up under, it's submerged, right? The subvision is under the vision. It's under the vision within that ministry, which is your area of response or your area of responsibility. So let's place uh, a pin right there and let's go a little bit deeper there. So there, there's, there is where, that's where there is much bickering. And if you see infighting in the uh, church, uh, disorder, uh, it'll come into a church or even an organization because guess what? Do you know that someone is out of order when there's disorder? Someone's out of order. Right, and that's why we're going to talk about three um, orders of authority that God has established through His Word. So often it, it comes from another leader because let's let's let let's let's really be realistic about this. That as as leaders, when there uh, something's going on, it's not normally the members that's causing the problem. It's leadership is having some some in house fighting, some some bickering, some arguing, some disagreements. They don't like something that's being done, right? The, um, when you talk about members, they come into the house of God and, and they come to hear the word of God. But when I tell you, when we're talking about the uh, disorder, it will cause everything to come out of order when there's no order in the leadership. When there's a disorder in the leadership, there's disobedience in the leadership. It causes some a, a ripple effect. It causes uh, other uh, areas to begin to uh, fall and, and you get cracks and you know, get that crack in the foundation and if you do not fix that crack eventually that crack is going to uh, uh, lead on to, and, and, and become a larger crack just like that crack you get in your window your windshield when you're driving and, and you find a crack and that's why they say so often we should get that crack fixed immediately and give our attention to it immediately because when we don't what happens it begins to spread and it can affect the other areas that um, that were healthy or others that were healthy affect the areas that did not have cracks that had no problems in it um, and, and that's so often it's imperative and that's why when we talk about leadership it's one of my favorite topics to speak about it's, it's imperative in any business or organization or in, in as well as in the church that you know your place, get in your place and stay in your place. Okay, do y'all still love me? Okay, I know that's hard for some people to to uh, gravitate to uh, getting into their place because if there's order must take place in the house of God. Order must, just like order in your church. Amen. And that's why we're going to talk about some um, the three different types of uh, authority that I want us uh, to really de dig deep into it and understand and how it comes through the word of God. And that's why there must be order. So there is an established authority, right, uh, with a process. See, there was that word process. A process should be followed in order to obtain success and maintain order within anybody's organization or anyone's um, business. So as in the house of God, right? So since we are uh, on authority, let's go ahead and cover those three realms uh, of established authority through uh, within the word of God. So you have that governmental authority. Let's go into Romans. Let's go to Romans 13. When, when we uh, talk about authority, there are some people, uh, even believers, there are some in, in, in the, the church. Yes, when I'm in the church that um, they have a problem with authority. But it's established in God's word. Uh, Romans 13 and 1, it says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, the powers that be are ordained of God. That's what the word of God says. So it's already been established. So it's God, Christ, and when we're talking about a governmental authority, you, you have your president, vice president, the house, the senate, you have governors, and you have you have mayors and congress uh, men and women, uh, your local officials, right? And then you have the citizens. That's the order. 
So when we go into uh, domestic authority, so we, we establish the governmental authority. Now, domestic authority, let's go over to Ephesians 5. Uh, when we go to Ephesians 5, I'm going to read 21 through 23. It says that submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. We're talking domestic authority, which is the family. Yes, so it says that submit, submitting yourselves one to another, right? Man and woman, uh, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Right there, that tells us what that, uh, when we talk about domestic authority, it's God, Christ, husband, wife, and children. That order does not change. We just read it in the word of God where it has already been established. God, Christ, husband, wife. Just like in governmental authority, it's God, Christ, and then you have your governmental officials, and then you have your citizens as we ran, ran that down. So it doesn't change. It's already been established. And so most organizations we talk about in the house of prayer, uh, uh, in, in the house of God, have a mission and a vision statement, right? If you, and Preferably your, your um, ministry have the same thing, which are two different, uh, different statements. The vision and the mission are not the same, even though you always hear people say mission and vision, but they are just, just like, you know, you talk about... Um, uh, 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 the vision and then the mission and we're going to break that down uh, and we talk about favor and grace and, and, and there's different uh, meanings for all these uh, terms that come in the word of God and we have to study that out so do you have a vision statement for your family huh, okay many of you are like oh, I, I didn't know I need a vision statement yes, see we need vision for everything that we do, whether it's, it's established in the house of God, it's in your workplace, because uh, most, as I said, most organizations have a vision statement. Even your home should have a vision statement. What direction is you are you and your husband going? What direction are you leading your children into? It must be established by the vision. Go before the Lord, and I trust that he's going to give you the vision for your family. Right, and the mission is uh, comes out of Matthew twenty eight and, and nineteen through twenty. Go ye therefore teaching all nations. That has been established. The mission now the vision will come from God to you, an individual, and you will lead. And, and we're talking about the domestic authority. You will lead your family. Yes, you will lead them by the vision that God has given you in the house of God in in, in your church in your organization. He will give you the vision for leading the people unto him. And remember, we don't lead people unto us, right? As I say, when people get upset and then they want to fall out of the church, they want to stop uh, supporting um, what, what is to take place in the house of God. That's why we do everything unto the Lord. We don't do it unto man. So when man does not do uh, something, we're, we're not just like, well, I'm not going to church anymore. Because you wasn't going for him, right? You were going because of the message that goes forth across the pulpit, the counsel of God that goes forth. You hear the word of God. It's not about the man, the messenger. The messenger. It's the message that we must focus in on. It's the message. Amen. So let's go to that third um, authority. It's spiritual. Uh, uh, we, we have the governmental. We have domestic authority. And then uh, we have our um, spiritual uh, authority, uh, which is our uh, leaders in the church. Let's go into Hebrews 13 and 17. 13 and 17 says to have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because what they keep watch over you as those who must give an account do this so that their work will be not joy not will, will be a joy and not a burden yes we don't want to burn our leaders right that that for that would be of no profit no benefit to you when we do that Ha, it makes it difficult to lead. Uh, you got the, uh, and you're talking about in uh, your spiritual authority. Uh, we're talking about the spiritual leaders, your pastor, your bishop, apostle that are leading, uh, that, that watch over the flock. 
We don't want to grieve them. We don't want to be the one to hinder them from getting into the presence of God because they're, they're always trying to handle issues that we have. They're always dealing with infighting in, the, in, in leadership. They're always dealing with things that, that they don't need to be dealing with because we're out of place. We have been displaced and we're out of order. We're causing disorder in the house of God. Just like on your job. I am a, a leader in my uh, organization on my job as well. Now, if I'm the one that's causing havoc with my uh, supervisor, uh, and my supervisor won't better do the things that uh, that she needs to do in order to lead the, uh, the company and do the things that she's supposed to be doing because she's tending to me when she don't need to be because as leaders, we should be doing our part, right? We should be doing what we uh, are supposed to be doing in our organization, in the church, doing what, we have, uh, what we're called to do, not doing what someone else is called to do because <laughs> it, it looks good, <laughs> right? Doing the things that God is calling us to do in the house of God. So that's our spiritual authority. So you have your uh, governmental authority, your domestic authority, and your spiritual authority, which is pastor, which is God, Christ, the pastor, elders, deacon, have the order with, within your organization. And then you have your men, men, uh, men, uh, members there, correct? So when we're talking about your spiritual authority, that never changes. God, Christ, pastors, uh, the, the the other leaders, elders, they, they don't assert themselves over the pastor. Uh, yes, they don't assert themselves over the apostle or bishop, whoever is, is in that uh, position in your uh, role in your uh, in your church or in your uh, in the, in the house of God. They do not ever establish. It doesn't matter how long they've been pastoring. It, it, all that doesn't matter. The order has been established. Um, Hebrew, as, as we read in Hebrews 13 and, and 17, God, Christ, pastor, leaders, and, and members. See, the order doesn't change whether because they're female or male. Just like in, in domestic authority, the order doesn't change from God, Christ, husband, wife, uh, and children based off of how much he makes or does not make. Based off of what she um, makes and what type of job she have or what type of uh, uh, title he or she has on their job. The order stays the same, right? It's, it's been established. It's God, Christ, husband, wife, and children. Children do not assert themselves over the parent. Uh, no, no. The wife does not assert herself over the husband because God has already established in his word the order. And that is the order that we follow. So we have established that God has implemented uh, a design to authority. It doesn't change regardless of the knowledge, the tag or title, the financial status, or the personal uh, favoritism that people so often use. We, we, we it's, it's, um... Regardless of, of those things, we we are of one knowledge, education. We are, we are of one body in Christ, but we are God's favorites, right? Amen. We are his favorite. He loves us. I'm already talking to people. I'm always talking to people about their goals and sharing with them how to stay focused and, and how to stay tracked with the vision that God has given unto them due to the type of business that I have, the Women's Empowerment Center. So where I conduct one-on-one uh, -on -one consultation with businesses, uh, business owners, management, and I give them financial management. So I tell clients this. I tell them that the vision is for your business uh, cannot come from someone else. It has to be what God has given you. If you're the business owner, one of your uh, employees don't come and say, this is the vision for the company. No, it, it's given unto you in the church, in the house of God. The member don't come over to come to the pastor and say, this is the vision for this church. No, that, that's out of order. And that could be why the vision, as I said, the vision doesn't flourish. Or come to pass. You are trying to carry out someone else's vision. So listen. When we lose sight of the vision. We cease to be an effective witness for Christ. Yes we absolutely do. Because remember. In the beginning I said that when we. Stumble everywhere. We're, we're out of place. And we're out of order. Out of God's order. So let me share with you a few things that happen. When you lose sight and you get distracted. 
So it, it may be that the vision wasn't clear. So if you under if you understood the severity of the vision from God, you can walk away from his promise. Back when I was growing up, you know, the your, your boyfriend would give you a promise ring, right? And, and you would wait for the day to actually get married or get engaged. It was a promise that you waited for. You waited for that promise to come to pass. Don't ever look low, little, and light about the vision that God has given unto you. The mission is to win souls, right? That's been established in, in Matthew 28. It's to win souls. But the vision may be to build a church for souls or preach to the nations or, or open an elderly home so you can minister to them. The vision from God is always tied to him. It's always tied to God. If it's not, it may be your own vision. It may be your own sight. And not God's. Okay, so as we established, vision is, is a unique gift. And then mission is uh, what's been commanded out of Matthew. So the second thing that could take place is that you have turned your attention to other people's vision. As we mentioned previously as well. The vision has to be your priority. This is a uh, this is challenging. Even for myself, others see the gift and talents within you and they pull on you to help them carry out their vision. We're talking in, in the organization, right? So be careful. It, it can become um, uh, meshed with, uh, without, bond, uh, without bond, uh, boundaries, right? For instance, a lawyer in, the, in a church may become a lawyer helping the church and, and, uh, and more often than usual, we, we may see something like that. Uh, accountant may... Uh, is a member of a church and, and they begin to help the church with, with their county um, uh, talents that they have. So this happens all the time in the church. Someone called to teach may teach in the ministry, but they may not be called in the fivefold as a teacher. This happens all the time. So the third thing that can happen when you lose sight and get distracted of the vision is that the, the power, you can't, you don't have the power to say no. I know it is difficult. I often have challenged myself with saying no. The 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 words your your words have power. Understand that. So you must be clear, brief, you and, and honest. Know your value and don't allow yourself to be taken advantage of, used, or mistreated. You cannot do everything for everybody, right? The vision that God has given you, you must make it priority. Before you realize everyone around you, vision is being birthed <laughs> and, and, and being carried out. And, and you have not even started. So be strong. You can do it. Remember, your words have power. Right? You have to know how to say no. So we're talking about being uh, reestablishing the vision. You were once on your way. You lost sight. You begin to, um, you were distracted. You begin to look uh, uh, in places that, that, that may not be where God is uh, leading you and guiding you. So many people have been living by sight alone. They have. I know you all still love me, right? And it is a vision, a sign, uh, 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 assassins that, that will try to come and discourage you. Uh, to keep you uh, uh, offline. From what God is calling you to do in, in your life or in your ministry. So I want to pray with you uh, as we begin to close out on our um, broadcast on today. I'm going to pray with you all. Um, I'm, I'm led to pray because so many have lost vision. They have lost sight of what God has called them to do due to distractions. The vision not being clear due to uh, not being able to say to no others to say no to others. But um, helping others and assisting them, uh, submitting into the vision of others and not carrying out what God has given unto you. And remember when you do, you do whatever you do in the house of the Lord, whatever you do in life, just always do it unto the Father. Amen. Come in, lift up. You're gonna be changed, you're gonna be free and make whole again. Come on in, it's time for life in the world. You're gonna be changed, you're gonna be free and make whole again.